because of the fun part, right? Yeah. That's such a beautiful introduction. Thank you so much, Kelsey. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. They, them, distinguished guests, and all of the allies of the LGBTQ plus community. I probably stand before you all tonight with immense pride and gratitude. I look around at familiar faces, <laughs> some I haven't seen in quite some time, and some new faces that I'm eager to share space with tonight. I would like for all of us to give a warm round of applause to Rainbow Cafe LGBTQ Plus Center and its team for continually creating space that is safe for our community to celebrate, find love, find community, and most importantly, to experience hope. Round of applause, please. Because I'm sure that work is not easy, so we appreciate y'all being committed to that. As we gather here at this remarkable gala, we are reminded of the progress we have made, the struggles we've overcome, and a path ahead. In a year that seems sweeping changes throughout legislation, throughout our country's legislation, acts of genocide and evil masking as acceptance or tolerance. We are still here. And for that, there is hope to be shared for the path that lies ahead of us. But we mustn't forget that after tonight, we all must make the small parts of our world a bit better. And that can look different for every one of us. <laughs> I'll be honest, when Carrie first approached me about being a keynote speaker tonight, I wasn't sure what to say. Well, yes, of course, but I wasn't sure if I had the right words. I wasn't sure if I had enough to say tonight. But if you know me, then you realize I tend to have too much to say. So with that, I'll start with this. Mohammed Gandhi, a great advocate for change, once said, you must be the change you want to see in the world. Think about that. You must be the change you want to see in the world. Let me ask, with anyone in the audience who would like to share their feelings or thoughts when they hear that quote? Anyone? Ooh, a tough crowd. No one wants to <laughs> hear their thoughts? Well, I'll, I'll move along. It's okay. I'll come back to y'all. Maybe next time. But when I read these words and I hear this quote, I can think of a time when I worked at State Farm. It was my first job out of college and during my life when I was newly prioritizing my general health and my mental health. As a CCC representative, I took up to 120 plus calls a day to help customers nationwide with their needs while sustaining specific metrics. The calls would range from helping a customer pay their bills or get logged into their online account, and a far too common call, allowing a customer to vent about how terrible the company is and the reason I'm working for it. But they were still paying their policy. The math wasn't math things, but that's beyond me. It might be angry customer math. Who knows? But you can imagine the type of stress that this can put on you daily. The math wasn't too different from the anger customers who called and complained about but kept their policy active that I felt. I would leave work with a stomach filled with anxiety. As the days turned into months, I began to realize that Becoming, I was becoming more cunt than a drag queen struggling to get her eyebrows, on, her eyebrows on because she forgot to shave off her boy brows. And if you've ever seen that happen, the struggle is real. Regardless, nothing was going to change unless I changed it. That was when a coworker and I got together and we came up with an idea that could change how reps felt about work. We devised an employee initiative called Purpose. And Purpose stands for people understanding real problems of life efficaciously. This group created spaces for employees to decompress, to find quiet time, and build better relationships. We executed our mission after presenting how this could reduce stress and high blood pressure in our department. We improved the lives 
of ourselves and the people around us by tapping into that change that we want to see in our environment. Now an update on this initiative, it actually went on to become an enterprise-wide recognized employee resource group that's rooted in multicultural DEI work. And for that, I'm proud. Gandhi's words serve as a guiding light and a reminder that change is simply an act of courage to be different unapologetically. And we're the type of folks in this room, <laughs> we know a thing or two about being different. <laughs> I mean, who crawls, hop, or frolic out of the closet with the anticipation that the world will understand us? I know I did, but I didn't give a hell. our unapologetic selves. However, in an age where techno technological technologies influence is running amok and our leaders are squabbling about things that no longer are a priority in the lives of American people. It's our time to be the change we want to see. And honey, it all takes a little bit of courage and curiosity and of course, a whole lot of frolic in your strut. Um, but, if your catwalk is not up to par, that's okay. A frolic is a nice pace. I can tell you firsthand how I became this person in my family, and my mom wasn't able to make it tonight. I love you, mom. I wish you were here. But as a single mom, full-time working, raising four boys and a girl, she's done a lot for me. And I'm gonna give her a little bit of a day with this story of me. But from a young age, I've always, I've always been curious and a little bit courage, courageous. As a child, I was enthralled with the world outside my grandmother's home because back then, we all lived under one roof. I mean, four sisters, all their kids in a one roof. You can imagine the type of chaos that we lived under. But interesting enough, inside those four walls just wasn't enough for this person that I was becoming. Well. That was until unless somebody was told to go out back and break off one of those sticks for a switch because somebody was doing something they should have been doing. But although I was a troublemaker, I was a curious George. No, really. At times, I would sneak out of, my, out of our house at the back door at the age of five. I recall this one instance where I walked up the block to the local gas station and picture it, me with longer hair, much bigger afro, and a diaper. I know, I'm not very attractive in what I'm in now, but just picture it. <laughs> I enjoyed the wonders that I saw on my street, the different colors of houses, and the amazing different people. Not everybody was black. It was different. You can't imagine the look on my face as I was making my way downtown, walking fast. My face is past, and of course, I'm homebound. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Since that moment, everyone in the house always kept an eye on me and always asked, where's Dion? Did you see him? Where is he at? <laughs> so look at me now. However, in a rapidly changing world, innovation requires that courage and that bit of curiosity. Innovation has become a driving force behind almost everything that we do, including advocacy. We now have AI tools that help us with our daily routines and work tasks that have sentient programs pretty much are aiding us in our companionship and our relationships. And at some point could probably start building communities to serve us. Our youth has the power to aid us in redefining many aspects of our systems. But our leaders are either holding them, holding resources captive, I mean life saving resources captive over our heads we're playing a game of performance in the hope that this will cater to some self-serving alternatives. It's time we call out those people. It's time we call them in. It's time we state the elephant's first, middle, and last name in the room. I mean, hell, it's time to stop blaming our teachers, our nurses, and our children for wanting more and expecting more. It's time we stop believing that leaders and power to save our community when they're not in our community. It's time we stop allowing people to act from a place of fear and allow change to happen.
It is time, it's time, it is time we bring justice to our screens, to their screens, that spew rhetorics of an agenda that could care less about black and queer existence, but want our time and want our culture. Damn it, it's time we change what we want to see in the world. So when you find yourself in a situation that calls for someone to speak up about what's wrong and what is right, God damn it, you feel those knots in your emotions, knotting in your gut. My friend, that is the courage and the curiosity that you need to say what is on your mind. Be afraid. It's time to be more than a trend, a hashtag, a soundbite. It's time to be angry. It's time because no one wants to sit in reality to fill the boiling of our world as our actual world ceases to exist. It's time to understand your worth and be treated like kings and queens and princesses that you are. It's time to go against the status quo, and even if that means standing alone because you know that your principles are rooted in positive transformation and anti-racism work. My honey, it is time. What if I said that time, that time, is possible for our youth and young adults and children in this room? If they receive the support and power to be the change that some of us wish we could be, instead of playing this game of bureaucracy of things. I now have that will of fire, a fiery torch that symbolizes new beginnings, hope, change, and life. This fire has been passed on to me from people of the past, people who are not here because a pandemic had not been and hasn't been treated with respect and our audacity that it needs to. And I'm talking about the HIV pandemic, epidemic, excuse me. This torch was passed from my ancestors, my friends and my families. Tonight, I share some of its flames with you. Technology and social media have opened new doors for me to allow that to happen, for us to connect, educate, and mobilize. However, it is up to us to manage those tools for a future we want to be a part of. Because, believe it or not, you are making history every single day. You wake up and you choose to be you. You choose to show up as you, and my God, no one knows how to walk in your shoes. Your existence is a pure essence which the enemy knows is the solution. But I've seen the darkest parts with those innovations and media screens cast shadows. And I experienced how the entity and the enemy wants your silence, wants your compliance, and wants your conformity. But I embolden you today, today that now it's a time to remove those distractions and to step into your power unapologetically, honey. Today is the day. So start that virtual campaign to increase awareness for people living with HIV. Create your own collective that bring experts together under and for one cause. Build your community up. Be used to build your community up. Hell, become a full-time artist. Be a creative. Start your own channel. Channel your emotions through your art. Believe that you can become the change you want to see. And you're, and you're never too old to start this journey. It's just a matter of mindset. And who knows? And I can help someone else step into that power too. <laughs> now I'll give you a bit of a backstory. I was never taught what it meant to speak your truth or live your truth. As a black person growing up in a black family, that was usually shown. But in my case, I probably would have wasted 23 years of my life trying to fit into this heterosexual stereotype of what it means to be black. I would have easily trotted out of the closet with a hair wrapped around my head and a snatched waist because what kid did not want hair like the brass dolls and a waist snatched like Barbie, okay? <laughs> but my boy IK said it best. IK Ice King from Adventure Time said, some days, I can't even remember a single reason to keep fighting, but giving up's easy. You know it's hard. 
waking up every day and believing in your own worth and choosing you. To know you have something special in you, even when, even if nobody else can see it. And sometimes there will be moments when people refuse to see it for many reasons, but honey, believe it, it's just a season. But just like ice cream from Adventure Time, don't let time be the enemy of good. When you discover how the world sees you, you have two choices, my friend. To fill those shoes like a diva, or be you, no matter what the narrative is about you. In my case, I found myself in spaces where I was often reduced if I failed to meet the status quo. Because I never, because I was never meant to fit into it. <laughs> and that's okay. I write my own history every single day. I choose to show up as my authentic self and the people are refusing to accept that. Who cares, honey? But to be honest with you, my advice, not everybody deserves your authentic self, and that's okay. But as we gather as we gather at this gala, we must remember the milestones of our history, of our ancestors, the people who have laid their bodies, their energy down, the Stonewall riots, the AIDS crisis, and the progress we achieved. These significant historical times were organized and fueled by people who were fed up with what they saw in their community. And as we gather at this gala, we must remember the milestones. We must remember them. In conclusion, the next generation of LGBTQ plus leaders requires innovation, ethical and moral judgment, unwavering courage and hope. And we must pour this into them every single day that we get the chance to. It is a collective effort to embrace change, stand up for justice, and continue to, to continue the fight for equality. As Gandhi once said, the future depends on what we do today. I encourage each and every one of you to actively participate in starting a conversation with a stranger tonight and plan to follow up with, some, with one another on how you can support our youth and young adults who are actively engaging in their right to protest. At the same time, we ensure that they have a safe place to rest at night when they're tired. Hell, you can go out and amplify those voices by, by still supporting those individuals. Heck, you can support the Rainbow Cafe Center with a generous donation. By doing so, we can collectively create a more inclusive and equal world for all genders and identities within the LGBTQ plus community. Our journey is far from over, but together, we can be the change we want to see in the world. Thank you.